Misogyny is the dislike, content, or hatred of girls or women expressed through discrimination, exclusion, hostility, belittling, violence, or objectification. Hey, and um, salam alaikum everybody. It's me, the Muslim doula again. Um, I just wanted to talk about something that might be considered a um, controversial topic. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there in the media or with people talking about how Islam is a misogynistic religion and um, you know especially with the rise of modern day feminism there's a lot of point of views about Islam and, and things that are taken out of context to prove how or to prove how you know misogynistic Islam is and how women are treated respectfully and lower than men um, one thing to clarify, Islam believes in justice, okay? We believe in equity, not necessarily equality. So, let's say we have 10 people, for the purpose of simplicity. Let's say we have 10 people, and half of them have $100, and the other half only have $10. And me, as a ruler, I'm, I expect everyone, all 10 of these people, regardless if they're making $100 or if they have $10, I expect all of them to pay me $5. That is what you would call equality, because everyone deserves to be treated the exact same way, regardless of their circumstance or their situation. However, equity is when you base what they need to pay on their circumstance. So the people who are only getting $10 are only going to have to pay a little bit versus the people who have $100 obviously should be paying more. Now that being said, now that we understand what equity and equality is, there's always the exception to the rule, but let's talk about the majority. The men and the women, okay? The female and the male. Men and women are different and that's a beautiful thing. There's nothing wrong with women containing the characteristics of compassion and mercy and patience and beauty and these are all amazing things these i'm really just barely touching the peak of this topic just for the purpose of getting this out there you know these are traits of a woman that are so beautiful and that we should embrace and I, so one of the things that i like to talk about with people when they you know wonder why um women are certain, you know, treated certain ways or why they have certain rights and men have certain rights in Islam. Well, you need to, like, for example, uh, if a man and a woman get divorced and there are children involved, it is the man who, depending on the age, the, the man who, who gets to keep the kids. Now, a lot of women have problems with this and they think, well, that's not fair, I need to keep the kids, they're my kids and, you know, no one can raise them better than me and they need their mother. Now, that's all true. But think about this in that you have to understand that Islam is a religion for all times and in, in the past, in the future, and all over the world, from the east to the west. So put yourself in a situation in like 1432, in the 1400s, or in the future, or in somewhere over in Africa, or in Asia, or South America. These rules need to be applicable for all women in all scenarios. So for a woman who is divorced, um, let's say in a situation where she's been married for a very long time, she's been busy raising her children and solely dependent on her husband financially. Now let's say she gets divorced, well now she just basically has to start from scratch financially and she has children to take care of, to feed, to watch, and then she has herself. And on top of that, let's say she wants to get married, that's, that's, that's tough. It's a lot more common and acceptable for a woman to meet a man who's divorced and who's watching his kids for that woman to accept him and marry him and continue a life with them. Men are a lot more hesitant to marry a woman who's divorced and who has children who are living and dependent on her. So for a woman to be able to be divorced and not have to take be sole providers and uh, primary guardians for their children. This is actually a form of relief. So if a woman is to get divorced 
and now instead of before her being the sole provider and trying to work and trying to get married or maybe not get married but just trying to take care of herself it's really really tough now in that situation now she can just focus on herself focus on just getting enough money and to survive for herself just enough food for herself maybe meet someone and get married and maintain a relationship with her kids but not have the burden and the pressure to be the sole provider for them so that's one aspect another aspect is that people bring up is the inheritance so men get more inheritance than women get so if a mother and a father pass away and they leave their inheritance and they have children a male and a female, a son and a daughter. The son gets more than the daughter get, does. And the reason for this is that the woman, the daughter, sh her inheritance is her money. She doesn't need to support anyone else with that. She doesn't need to give it to her husband if she's married or to her kids or to her brother or to anyone else. She can keep that money. She can invest that money. She can open a business. She can buy it buy whatever she wants with it, she can keep it in savings, whatever she wants. Now for the man who inherits, inherits the money, he is, if, if his sister is not married, he needs to take care of her. If he has children, he needs to take care of them. And if he has a wife, he needs to take care of, of her. So he needs to actually split his money. He doesn't have the freedom to be like, I'm going to keep this, do whatever I want with it. It is his duty to spend that money and to take care of his family. That's another thing that may look like it's unfair from the outside, but once you look inside and you understand why this is split that way, it is fair. Every single thing in Islam is fair if you were to just look into it and understand the reasons behind it. Society as a whole would be complete and free of corruption if everyone followed the Islamic rules to the T. But of course, we are human and we are imperfect and you know even me myself sometimes I complain to my husband and I'm like oh why do you get to work and I have to stay home with my kids and I know a lot of women who uh, complain about that too but it's not easy for a man to take care of their family it's not even like it's their choice it is their duty and they're obligated to financially take care of the wife and children we're not obligated to so if we work and we make money, we can use that on whatever we want. That is the responsibility. The, the pressure and the fear of losing a job or not making enough money is a lot stronger. Sometimes we need to give each other a break. You know, men need to give women a break and women need to give men a break. And we need to make things easier for each other. We need to understand the other point of view. So it's not, Islam is not misogynistic religion. These are very, very few examples of many out there that prove that Islam is all about equity and justice and fairness. Hopefully this is beneficial to at least somebody out there. I really appreciate the comments. Obviously not the negative comments. I could do less of those. You know, it's really not helping anyone when you guys insult each other and fight on there. I'm not going to disable that. It's your choice. It's going to be on your shoulders. but. Uh, I do appreciate the good comments, so thank you guys, and inshallah I can post another video very soon, and if you guys have any suggestions, I would love to hear them. Thank you guys, and ma'asalama, and have a good day.